addresses. I want everything set when Julian Marsh gets here. Come on, Bert, we still have four more songs to write. Oh, come on, we've got the whole weekend. All right, kids, let's have those names and addresses.
a break, Andy. She's great. Andy, Mr. Marsh is here. I just saw the taxi fall. I got no time for breaks. Mr. Marsh is here. Damn straight toots. Wait, I'll talk to Mr. Marsh myself. I don't want to get you into trouble. I said beat it. Oh, where are you going? At least give me your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What the hell was that? Oh, she wanted to get into the line, boss. Ours are Notre Dame's. <laughs> All right, everybody gather around and listen to me. Today we start work on a new show. You're gonna rehearse for four weeks and then trial in Atlantic City. You're gonna work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. You're gonna dance till your feet fall off and you are not going to be able to stand up. But five weeks from now, Pretty Lady's gonna be the best damn show this town's ever seen. You're on your way to glory at 32 bucks an hour, so anybody who thinks he can't take it better, quit right now. Nobody? Good. Take a half an hour to get fitted for wigs and costumes, and then let's get started. Okay, kids, okay. Wigs downstairs, costumes in costumes and costume room A. Come on, let's go. Oh, look. Somebody left a purse on the piano. It must be hers. Can Annie throw out? Is there anything in it? Yeah, 40 cents. In a card. Peggy Sawyer, 125 Elm Street, Allentown, PA. Look, you go for your fitting and I'll see that she gets it. Julian! Great speech, and you won't regret a word of it. Pretty Lady is the best show we've ever written. And now with the greatest director on Broadway. Uh, I've never mind the soft soap, Bird. I need this show as much as you do. Wall Street got you too, huh? You know the old saying, there's a horse's ass for every light on Broadway. I've given all I've had to that glittering gulch and it's been a hell of a ride. Sure, the crash got me down for the count, but I'm still Julian Marsh, damn it. Pretty lady's gonna put me back on the top. Let's talk about the cast. Best in town, Billy Lawler for the juvenile. Me and Maggie for the character parts. And Dorothy Brock in the lead. It's Brock I'm worried about. Her last hit was 10 years ago. What, Julian, we have to use her. She's got Abner Dillon in her back pocket. You know, Dillon's kitty cars. And he's agreed to put up the whole hundred thousand, as long as she's the star. But she can't dance. Oh, we'll throw a few girls around her, let her wave her arms around a lot. The public will never know the difference. I don't know, Maggie. Easy, Marsh, here she comes. Dorothy, I was wondering if I might be- Dillon, say another word. I want to do this myself. Mr. Marsh, ever since I was a tiny little girl and saw my first Julian Marshall, I dreamed of the day when I might work with the King of Broadway. And at last, that day has come, and I am filled with pride, joy, and humility. Thank you, Miss Brock. Thank you. I'm feeling a little full myself. Now, uh, before we go any further, I'd uh, like to try you out on one of the numbers. Now, hold on a minute, Mr. Marsh. Dorothy don't have to try out. She's already got her contract. Mr. Dillon, what would I do without you? Oh, there are a few things you forgot to mention, so I wrote them in. Limousine, redecorated dressing room, private maid. Oh, no problem about the salary. I just added another zero. Now, see here, Dorothy. Of course, if there's any objection, I won't insist. We'll go pedal our kitty cars, and you go pedal your fish. Miss Brock, I don't believe that you're hearing me. I said I want to try you out on one of the numbers to see if, I, if you can handle the role. If you're asking me to audition, Mr. Marsh, I'm afraid the answer is no. Wait, wait, please. He's not asking you to audition, Dorothy. He just wants to find out if it's in the right key. Let's try that new one we went over yesterday. Dorothy, you are going to love it. Bert and I see you in this low-down dive. The piano comes out a hot jam beat.
Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Billy, try it three quarter time for Miss Brock. What's your lean? We wrote that song to be played in. And down it's all. Miss Brock, from the top? I'm sorry, Mr. Marsh. From the top, Miss Brock. Thank you. 
she first started out, she was making 30 bucks a week and sending a hundred home to her mother. Let's face it, the only thing that Dorothy has over anyone at this table is Abner Dillon. Who is he? Her sugar daddy. Oh, her father. <laughs> you can't be just 21 years old. No one can get that dumb in just 21 years. <laughs> Kid, we're going to have to teach you the Broadway facts of life. Oh, don't worry about me. I learned all about men in Allentown. Eugene O'Neill would have given his eye teeth to have written that line. Should we tell her about musicians? All she has to know is that they keep them in the pit. And for a good reason. <laughs> I still wish I could be in the show with you. You will be, kid. If not this show, then the next one. You're a looker, and you can chirp like a bird. And you're pretty out stuff in the steps department, too. You hookers are the luckiest ones in the whole darn business. So what if you had a bit of bad luck this say You got all you need to cheer you up right there at the end of your ankles. If you've a melancholic taste of the blues, I've got a remedy. show they'll pay good money to see and you're here giving it away on the streets. Now you kids get back in there. Oh this is great, just great. Is there something wrong, boss? Wrong? We're shy one girl. That's what's wrong. But boss, you told me to pick two dozen. <laughs> Plus one for good measure. good measure. I always pick one for good measure. Just don't give me any excuses. Just get me another girl. Fine. I will have one here first thing in the morning. That's just ducky. 
I can hardly wait. And I'm supposed to set the boardwalk up this afternoon. You know, I got a good mind to pick the first girl I see. Just walk up to the first dame who passes and say, You! Who? Me? Yeah, you. Can you dance? I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I can do any tap step ever invented. Wings, ripples, buffaloes, shovels. All right, hey, Allentown, take it easy. You got the job. Andy, take her in and get her ready to rehearse by 2 o'clock sharp. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you the Mack truck who tried to run me down this morning? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. It'll never happen again. I swear to my mother, on my father, on my aunts, on my uncle. Hey, hey, kid, take it easy. I uh, kind of enjoyed it. Now, uh, just get in there and start learning those routines. We got a show to do. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Costume? Yeah, boss. All right, good. Now get me Brock and Billy. I want to go through the boardwalk number with the dialogue. We can't do the dance section, Mr. Marsh. Gladys is out with the cold. Then use Winnie. No, boss. Winnie's in the number before, and she'll never make the change. Then just get me any girl. I want to rehearse now. Miss Brock, Billy, let's go. The sun sparkles on a section of the boardwalk in Atlantic City. As we discover Rodney and Madeline, Madeline speaks. Darling, darling, why did it take you so long to declare yourself? The answer is yes, of course. We live together in a cottage by the sea, and every morning we'll have breakfast and kisses in bed. Oh, my God. And Rodney says... And will you always love me, Madeline? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> And Rodney declares their love, and they kiss. Hold on a minute. What's that fella doing to Dorothy? I'm just acting, Mr. Dillon. Don't care what you call it. I ain't putting up no money to see the lady I love kissed by no no good actor. Just, just cut the kiss. Say the speech and improvise something. My darling Madeline, I... I love you. I worship you. And I adore you. Still in rehearsal, 
Come on, Andy, I want to take them, uh, clean up that last section before the pivots. Okay, everyone down to the to me to let any gigolo stand in its way. I want you to give him up. Aren't you a bit confused, Julian? You're the director of my show, not my personal life. When your personal life interferes with my show, I direct that too. Mr. Marsh, I shall see whom I please when I please, and no show is going to stand in my way. Telephone! I'd like you to take a look at the song. Thank you, we're just hurting it. Bert, 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 we've got a little problem, and I've got a little solution. Nick Murphy, please. Murphy? He's a, he's a killer. Look, Julian, if you don't like the song, just say so. I put a uh, 
girlfriend of uh, his in my last show. He owes me a favor. Hello, Nick. Julian Marsh. Yeah. You know, Nick uh, got a little bit of a problem. And uh, you see, there's this guy by the name of uh, Pat Dunning. Yeah, and he's been hanging around our rehearsals. And I was thinking, you know, since your place is right across the street, that uh, maybe you could send a few boys over to uh, persuade him to make himself scarce for a few weeks. Right. Thank you, Nick. And I believe that is the end of that. Maybe Philly will change your luck. He's right. Come on, let's get packing.
Brandon. Where's the scrim? Okay, 28, Brandon. Scrim that, scrim that 28, right? 28. Okay. Make sure he knows it's 28. All right, yeah. Um, Come on, folks. Everybody up on stage. Quiet down. Quiet down, please. Everyone up on stage, please, as quick as you can. All right, the company got to Philadelphia, but it's up to you to get us out of here alive. There are 25 musicians in that pit who are just dying to go on overtime. So, oh, one more thing before we get started. Not all the sceneries and costume has arrived yet, so we'll be adding things as we go along. Don't let it throw you. Professor, we're late. Let's go. <laughs>
Are you suggesting that I bring you on after the blackout? <laughs> I am suggesting that you redo the dance to suit my talents. That may make it an awfully short number, Miss Brock. <laughs> regret that remark, Mr. Marsh. You may be the director of this show, but I'm driving the kitty car. All right, for the rest of you, because you've earned it, I want you to go home tonight and relax and forget all about Pretty Lady until tomorrow. And then come back here and give the performance of your lives. Company dismissed. Company dismissed. Peggy, I'll finish changing and meet you in the stage dressing room. In a minute, Billy. Are you going to the party, Mr. Marsh? Huh? To the Regency Club. Miss Jones and Mr. Barry just invited everyone. <laughs> Is something funny? You are. Eyes shining like a kid at Christmas, dreaming of parties and opening nights, the glitter and tinsel of musical comedy. Just look at yourself. A speck of dust on this stage. Indistinguishable from the other 40 specks of dust I put there. I know that, Mr. Marsh. But put all those specks together. You have something alive and beautiful that reaches out to thousands of people you've never seen before. Broadway dreams, Sawyer. We've all had them. I mean to hold on to mine, Mr. Marsh. So did I. Sweet dreams, kid. They are. I'm a speck of dust. In your show. Andy, Andy, where the hell are you? Coming. Right here, boss. I got all the notes typed out, all seven pages. The notes can wait. Jones and Barry are throwing a party over at the Regency Club. Come on, let's go dream a little. No, Miss Brock. Hey, play something wild, will ya? Something not from the show. Say, another one of these that was a bridge over you. Another crack like that and a bit of a monument over you. Jake and I turned around and you disappeared. How's that feel, sweetie pie? Like a dead, wet cobra. Dorothy. Say, it's even you tonight. I finally figured out what the show needs. A few more songs by Irving Berlin. Now get away from me and take Buffalo Bill with you. Now hold on a minute. I'm putting up a hundred thousand dollars for this show. So you better not be giving me the air. So I better not give you the air, huh? How about just a few bubbles? Now get out of your kitty car and pedal your way back to Tulsa, you beached whale. She didn't mean it. She's just excited. You know, with the show opening tomorrow. There's got to be an opening show tomorrow. Now we go to Brock, she's out of the show. Wrong. Brock goes out tomorrow as scheduled. Don't be a fool, Dylan. Are you going to throw all that money away because of a dame? It's my funeral, ain't it? And the funeral of half a hundred kids who have been working and dancing their feet off to give you a show that you can be proud of. Well, Mr. Dylan. You wouldn't do that, would you? Not after all the faith we put into you. But she called me a whale and a cobra. Listen, in this business, that's a compliment. <laughs> what you need is some fun. So why don't you come with me to some nice, quiet corner? And I'll sing you the songs from my last six shows. I don't care how many hotels you've tried. And the Belvedere, too. And now. I don't know what's gotten into her. She was fine this afternoon. Bert, I smell a rat. And the rat's initials are Pat Denny. Hello, Belvedere. Have you got a Pat Denning there? You do? Well, give him to me, you idiot! Hey, Bob, it's Flo with the switchboard, and she just told me that Dorothy Brock has been calling all over town to get Pat Denning. See, 
I was right. Denning is in town. Oh, Pat, I can't go on like this. I've tried to forget you, but I can't. So please come back at once, at once. Hey, Peggy, how about the next dance? In a minute, Billy. What do we do about Denning, boss? Call Nick Murphy. I think he's got a few uh, Philadelphia cousins who can handle the situation. Dorothy, will you calm down and tell me what's wrong? In a minute. Hold me first. Hold me and never let me go. A couple of Murphy's boys will be over in about uh, 15 minutes and they better not find dead in here. Hey, Peggy, how about that dance now? I'm sorry, Billy, but a friend of mine is in trouble. A male friend or a lady friend? A male friend, but... Never mind. Good night, Peggy. Something to mad Bill? No. Not anymore. Come on. Let's have some fun. Miss Brock! Miss Brock! Who is it? Peggy Sawyer, Miss Brock. Peggy Sawyer? Oh, the little fainting violet Mr. Denning took out to dinner last week. Come in. I've got to see Pat. Pat is going to be trouble. You're done right unless you get the hell out of here. Wait a minute, Dorothy. What is it, Peggy? Two men, friends of Murphy. Don't you tell me to wait a minute. And how come you're sticking up for her anyway? Dorothy, you don't understand. I think I understand all too well. No, you don't. Just get out of here, the both of you. But, Miss Brock. It's all right, Peggy. Now, Dorothy. I said the both of you. All right. If that's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. Get out. 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 <laughs>
buzzing and that's the ball game. Then we have nothing to worry about. The finale is the best number in the act. Well, it won't be for long unless Brock gets out here. Dorothy, Dorothy, where the hell are you? Don't have to shout, Julian. I can hear you. Well, you're on in about uh, two seconds. I have never missed a cue in my life. What I do, you can take me to task. Not before. Excuse me, Miss Brock. I just wanted to explain about last night. I don't want an explanation from you. But, Miss Brock... Just get away from me. The farther, the better. Quiet, quiet, Your Honor. Q68, go. A crazy quilt that won't 
fool. Nobody steps on a line in a Mars show. Take your things and get the hell out of here. You're fired. Curtain, bring it in. May I have your attention, please? Miss Dorothy Brock has had an accident and will not be able to continue with tonight's production of Pretty Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, your tickets will be refunded at the box office. House lights. <laughs>